Hello and welcome back. I'm Julie Samako, owner of Southern Charm Reefs, where we teach you the art of wreath making and faux floristry. Today in this video, I want to show you how to use flocking in order to give your arrangements a little snow kiss look, if you will. Um, this one is a spring arrangement that I wanted to just give an example of what it would look like if in the springtime we had a little unexpected snow, right? But you can use flocking on holiday, uh, pine, holly, literally anything. I'm going to show you in the video, but you want to get, you're going to first want to color fast test your uh, florals to make sure that there's not going to be any issues. Um, and it just takes about a day to set up, but it's so fun. Isn't that pretty? Um, there's the bottom. And I love that this is just a round arrangement and it looks like it had a little bit of a snow happening in the springtime. Here are the supplies you're going to need to start your flocking project. Um, here is the snow that I got off of Amazon. It's called Snow Flock. Uh, this is a two pound bag, but they come in five pound and 10 pound bags. So if you want to do a large Christmas tree, I mean, you just wouldn't want to get more, right? So I'm trying to keep it in the bag so it doesn't go all over the place. Um, the other thing you're going to need is a spray bottle. I got this one because it's a little bit finer mist than um, the pump spray bottles that you might put around your grill. Um, so this one's just a little bit more of a finer mist. And then you're going to need something to put your flocking in. So if you have one of these um, sifters, you know, obviously you're not going to want to use the one from the kitchen. You're going to want to get something specifically for this. Maybe you can get it at the dollar store, but just something that has a little bit of a um, sifter in it. If you get one like this, you're going to need a bowl or a paper plate or something to just to hold it down um, or while you switch from spraying to sifting. <coughs> so, but I also found this one, which I kind of like it. It's good, you know, I think for um, if you want to put cinnamon on your coffee this is what i remember you know these are the things that you would use it for like cocoa powder on your coffee or um, any spices or something that you're trying to use but this one has a little a sif, um, sifter on the end, end, of, end of it and i like that i could put my cap on it and just save the flocking for later without making a huge mess i was going to try to put that somewhere okay so those are the things you're going to need a sifter a water bottle and the flocking first thing you want to do is test your florals to make sure that they are color fast. And I don't have a paper towel, but I do um, have a tissue paper, I mean tissue paper, tissue Kleenex. So the, the, the way to test it is to spray your water on your paper towel and you want to saturate it pretty good or you can spray directly on your flower. However, if you spray on your flower and there is a dye in it that runs, you're going to get it all over your flowers, right? So I like to stick to it, like put the water on the um, paper towel, and then I'm going to take the paper towel and I'm going to blot around the flower, okay? And what this does is it, you're just checking to see if that dye transfers over to your paper towel or your Kleenex. And if it doesn't, then you're good to go. So I'm going to do also the berries. And you're going to want to also do the leaves. These look good. I don't think the cream color would have any issues, but we're testing it. The other things are plastic, but you can still test. I'm pretty sure the plastic's going to be fine. Okay, so you just go through and you test everything to make sure that the dye is not going to transfer over when you start getting it wet. The other thing I'm going to use is paper. So I do have my my rotor, what do you call it, Lazy Susan underneath it here, and I put paper down. If you, you could put, I've seen people use old sheet pans, cardboard, you know, you could put anything you want. But you definitely want to protect the surface as much as possible because the uh, flocking does get hard once it, um, sets up okay so first thing we're going to do and i'm going to get this out of the way so i don't spill it and make a huge mess um, i've got my flocking and my water bottle first thing i want to do is spray the arrangement i work in sections you're going to want to work in sections on this one okay so the first thing we're going to do is spray 
and you, the flock sticks to whatever's wet. All right, so you're gonna wanna just get it pretty drippy. And now we're going to flock. We're just gonna sprinkle. Now as, put as much or as little as you like. You can also do just one or two flowers before you put it in the arrangement. And I'm turning this so that I can get some flocking underneath my leaves because you know there's a different angle that's pretty just doing a little snow Oh, maybe we should get the glue strings off before we do that. <laughs> oh, and wear a mask. Okay, wear a mask next time. Here we go. We're going to rotate this around. And I'm going to do another little section. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Okay. We're going to just flock, flock, flock. I can't imagine doing a whole Christmas tree, but I have seen people who have been very diligent taking their time with their patience of doing it. And you just keep, you have to really do it in sections. And the one thing to consider is like when the snow falls on leaves and stuff, it's on the top, isn't it? It's not really on the bottom of it. So you don't necessarily need to turn it like I was doing. Something I just thought about. Let me show you what we have so far. Isn't that pretty? We've changed a spring arrangement into more of a um, winter. Here in the south, that would happen to us. Like we would have a warm day and a couple of warm weeks or whatever and then all of a sudden your flowers are coming up the daffodils the tulips and then boom we get a frost or we get something that just says nope just joking we're not in spring okay sounds like we're getting a delivery don't interrupt me Delivery man, I'm in the zone. And then we're just going to keep flocking. I am going to turn this just to get a little bit more on the side here. This, um, the glue strings come out for sure. You can see they look like little spider webs. You're just, you're saturating it. Okay, that's how much water, not just a little, you're gonna saturate it. That's why I wanted you to test for color fastness before you add it. Okay. I'm just going to do the little tips over here on these. All right, I've got one little suction, and then I'm starting to circle all the way back around. I'm okay that it has a little bit more on one flower petal than the other. I'm just going to turn some of these this way.
Oh gosh, the air turned on. <gasps> Don't be blowing in the studio. Okay. Just gonna fix a couple of these edges that my fingers got on. All right, I like that. Now, to set it, let's just do another little, for good measure. It's gonna have a little more on the top. That's just how the wind, that's just how the, the snow works, right? Okay, here it is. Now, to set it, I'm gonna put my water bottle a little bit further back and you wanna mist don't want to necessarily saturate at this point. The water is what's going to set it, but you don't want to put so much on that it drips off. Oh, it's got a lot of Did I go all the way around? I can't tell. Okay, I think that looks good. All right, let me put this out of the way. So you can see that there's definite flocking. Now this is going to dry. You need to let it sit for 24 hours. It does wash off with water. So I would not put this on a wreath if you're going to put it on a door, but it does work really nice for indoor arrangements. Isn't that pretty? I would wait for it to dry and then come back and peel off any of your um, glue strings. It's okay that some flowers overlap on a green piece that you can see the greenery. Um, and that it's not flocked underneath the flower because I want to give a snow you know, a snow effect. And so snow is going to be heavier on the top and it's not going to fall underneath pieces, right? Snow falls only what's on the top. Um, so that's what I wanted to get, get with this look. If you want more of a snow flocked look, you might want to flock your pieces beforehand. So here's one that I'm going to um, try to zoom in a little bit on. This one I, um, this, these are two pieces, okay? So this one is what we started with, and this was the one I flocked. So you can do this before you start crafting and designing if you didn't want to do it all um, at one time. So it's completely up to you, but this one is dry. You can see that I can use it and move it, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't fall off. The other thing, too, is when I sprayed it to seal it, it was... It didn't look like it would be white, but what happens is it dries, okay? It dries the it dries white. But the, anyway, here is, how pretty is that? I love it. There you have it. What do you think? What are you gonna flock now? Are you gonna flock everything? Just remember that it will come off in the, um, the elements. So I wouldn't put it on a wreath yet. The only thing I haven't tested is sealing it with the sealant to see if we could use it outside. I have a feeling that would not work, but this is perfect if you want to flock a Christmas tree, if you want to flock an arrangement, um, if you want to flock some ribbon or something that you want to put in a, a Christmas tree later. I think you could just think of like the sky is really the limit. Just make sure that you set it with your water and let it dry for 24 to 48 hours, depending on how saturated it is, so that it could get nice and uh, stiff. But here it is, it turned out so fun and so festive. Let me know below if you have any questions.